So, Brian, I know everybody, you know, think back to the preseason. I think people were wondering we're going to take this day by day, week by week, and hope that we maybe have some semblance of a season. And now we look up and we're already at week six, which is the final week of the regular regular season. Does it almost seem unbelievable that it's gone this quickly and here we are? It does. I, I'd be lying if I said it didn't. You know, we took the approach of we're going to go day to day and make sure that every day is is not taken for granted. And uh, so we, we made sure that we uh, we got our work in. We kept the kids believing. And, uh, you know, here we are, you know, we're week six playing for, you know, a share of the GMC championship. Well, that's what I was going to say. Not only is it a week six game, and obviously you guys have played a conference schedule throughout. I know last week we'll talk about that because I know that's probably one of those coulda, shoulda, woulda when you look back at the film. But but you still have that opportunity. You're going to Lakota West, which is 4-0, and unbeaten in the league, obviously. And you got a chance to win a share of the GMC title, which is a big deal. It's huge. I mean, it's the first time in school history here, you know, since we've been in the GMC. You know, we win the all-sports trophy every year since we've been in it. And we haven't, we haven't been a part of the football championship. And, and this Friday night, we, we get to be a part of that, that game you know, to get a share of it. And, and our players and, and, you know, our community and, and even the, the whole the, the whole school is, is really, really excited about that opportunity. Now, not to bring back a bad memory, but I know, coaches, when you look back on the film of last week, it's probably one of those offensively, obviously, your worst performance of the year in terms of point output. Yep. Yep. Did you look back and go, man, so many missed opportunities? Yeah, we had two or three l- large large opportunity opportunities um you know they my hat goes off to hamilton and, and coach mahan they they were hungrier at at the at the fourth quarter and at six minute mark they were hungrier and they drove the field and they scored and and we couldn't answer you know we had four minutes to answer and we didn't answer so we missed out on that opportunity we missed out on a uh, a fourth and goal from the one yard line we missed you know we, we got stopped so they they uh they definitely earned it and um you know they were a hungrier team A strange year in the GMC because everybody's been so accustomed since 2008 to it being Colerain's league. This year, however, it started with Lakota West going to Colerain week one and winning that one. And now you close the regular season at West. Tom Bolden, it's taken two years, really. And and now maybe there's a little changing at the top. But, I mean, again, this is what you play for, right? I mean, I know you've got the postseason ahead, but you play for – the final week of the regular season, which is this Friday, and a chance to win a league title. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Tom has done a great job. Uh, again, Lakota West has been waiting for this. Uh, they've had that talent there. Um, you know, Larry did a great job when Larry was there, and, and, and now Tom has taken that, that torch, and, and he's put them in. You know, they're, they're already GMC champions. they got a part of it. They can't lose it, so they're going to have a share of it regardless of what happens Friday, and I'm sure they want it all by themselves, knowing Tom and, and knowing what they want. So um, it is. You know, Colerain has, has had it for 20 years, I think, or something like that. It's, so there's going to be a different name on that trophy for 2000, you know, 2020. When you look at Lakota West, naturally, they've got some talent on offense. Young, Mitch Bolton, the quarter coach's son at QB. But defensively, they are really good. I mean, you look at four games, two shutouts, held Fairfield to seven, had a high-powered Sycamore offense, only scored 13. What makes their defense so good? You know what? They, they tackle well. Um, their, their, front, their front seven, their front four, it, it's just they're big, they're strong. Uh, they got burst about them. Uh, but uh, they, they, uh, they're the best defense I've seen in a long time. I mean, Cole Rains had some really good defenses. We've always been in the same type of uh, discussion, um, you know, up at the top two or three defenses. But, you know, this defense they have and, and what Carlton Gray's done as their D.C., uh, it's a pretty special defense. Let me ask you about how weird this season is. I mean, before even Friday night's game, you're going to know who you play in the first round of the postseason, <laughs> which is strange. I know – Today and tomorrow, kind of you guys seed the teams as coaches. Mm-hmm. Thursday, the OHSA is going to release that. I know coaches lament sometimes the Harbin computer ratings. Maybe sometimes I don't get this, or how could they be where they are? But now it's in your hands, the mm-hmm. coaches' hands. Is that a little frightening? How different is that? Because, I mean, when you look at Region 4, you've got the 16 teams, so it's going to be an even number, which means everybody's got mm-hmm. a game. How strange does it feel? I know some of those coaches' polls over the years get a little dicey. How weird is this going to seem? You know, it's it's all 
media driven as far as the AP and all that. But as far as us voting, I mean, I voted this morning and you know, there are 16 teams and, and, and nine of them are GMC teams. Right. So you hope that bodes well for us, you know, having a home game and doing the things that you'd like to do in the round one, maybe even round two if you have the higher seed. So I like it. I mean, I'm not Steve Speck. I'm not Doug Ramsey. You know, I'm not those guys that might say different because they only have three teams voting because LaSalle's a Division II team. So uh, I, I, right now, I think for the GMC and our conference and where I've been most of my life, I, I actually like it a bunch. It's not frightening. I think if we work together and, and, and we keep it somewhat, you know, uh, real, you know, and, and put the put, – Put the teams that you've played against and the teams that you've watched on film, I think you're going to get a, a good solid 12 teams at least. You know, I'm asking you to look into a crystal ball, and you're not the OHSAA, but this has been a year different than any other year. Do you envision, though, could this be the beginning? I know there are many people who every year say – Love to expand the postseason. They're doing it in Major League Baseball. Most people think something out of that will come down. Do you see that? Do you think that? I hope when, not. I don't want. I don't want every team making it. Uh, I think that's what makes Ohio special. You know. You know. Could they add another couple teams? Yeah, I'm sure they could. Um, will they be able to do that and still keep the the? the integrity of the season together and, and still be able to finish with a state championship after, you know, after Thanksgiving or right around there. Um, I think Ohio high school has done a phenomenal job over the years, but I, I, I would totally be against making every team, you know, allowing every team in the playoffs. We just, the state of Ohio is not, uh, is not something that, you know, you take lightly. I mean, we're a top five team, top five state in, in the country. You know, year in and year out, we're top five in, in the country. I believe that. And, you know, I'm 28 years into coaching high school football, and, and it's, it's, it's went up and down. There's times when you think you're at two or three, you know, but I, I guarantee you we're top five. So. Well, and you're obviously making the playoffs this year because everybody is, but you've made it five straight years prior to this year mm-hmm. since 2015. Mm-hmm. Talk about that consistency, what that's meant for a program like Mason. You've got a program now. Yeah. You're making it every year. That's something pretty special. Yeah. It's it's great players and great coaches, but most importantly, the great players that have come through that believe in, in what we do. You know, we have a, a four three two one mantra that you know it's our big four: our faith, family, academics, football, and then the three questions. You know, uh, are you committed? Are you giving great effort? Can I trust in you? And it's them hearing that consistently over and over and over, and that equals to that one culture. You know, and I think I think our culture is real now. It's not like you're just using that word culture. You know, family. You know, culture. Those words are used all over the place. But do you really have it? And I think we we have that here now. I mean, there's you know we had I don't know right. Around 100 players at the beginning of the season um, in, in a COVID se- in a COVID scare year, and uh, those 100 kids wanted to play. You know, and now we're at 90 or so now. But um, I, I have a lot to lot to be thankful for, fortunate of great players and, and, and a great great coaching staff. Final question: Back to Friday night for Mason to defeat Lakota West. Having watched them on film and knowing your team in particular, what needs to happen for you on both sides of the ball? Well, we got to score one more point than them, but no, uh, I, you know, we got to tackle well. We got to tackle like they, they tackle, you know, and 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 we've got to make sure that at halftime, whether we're up a score or down a score, that we don't flinch, and we make sure that uh, we attack the second half the same way we attack the first half. And uh, if we can tackle well and and put ourselves in a ball game here, you know, going into the fourth quarter, I think it's going to be a, a great, you know. Uh, final fourth quarter for us and who knows it might go overtime and um, you know I, I offensively you know we got to get some things going we got to mix it up a little bit and coach Little's been working really hard with his staff and um, you know the, the the whole cliche is if you can play all three phases and do well um, you know you'll be in a game and, and, and we know that um, but I think the first one I said is we got to tackle well defensively and uh, our defense has done a good job you know I, I don't doubt that that they won't come to play. Final question, the easiest of all, when you go to Skyline Chili, what's your go-to? Oh, my go-to. And we just went there two weeks ago with our CAs, with Nate Dog and uh, Petra. We actually um, we tweeted it out, everybody's meal. But I, I, I go to the uh, five-way and uh, a cheese coney, onions and mustard. And um, I, I, I think I can go for some of that here uh, coming up Friday night. It'd be nice after, after a big win. <laughs> Perfect. I, I'm 